Hello chaps and chapesses, and today we're going to talk about top 10 tips for fly fishing from a skiff. So a skiff, what is a skiff? For those that don't know, it is the small flat bottom speedboat that we use to access the flats. Typically these are fiberglass hulled vessels, very shallow draft, and they can operate in six inches or less of water and at full plane can normally operate in less than a foot of water. And these skiffs allow us to access areas of the flats and the backcountry mangroves where our target species inhabit. They're crucial, they're like the car to the flats. Now the thing about a flat skiff is it's quite a small vessel, normally about 18 feet or less, and you are normally about to throw three fairly large individuals into that skiff, which creates its own set of dynamics. On the front, you will have a casting platform, and on the back, you will have a poling platform. And these are really the main characteristics of a skiff. And the other big thing that you need to remember about a flat skiff is that the guide or captain who is looking after you, this is their skiff and their word goes. So if they ask you to do something, they always have a very good reason for doing it. It's normally safety orientated, so you must do what they say. Or otherwise you could find yourself in a difficult situation and in an extremely irritated guide, which means you're probably not gonna catch a lot of fish. So the first thing that I want to talk about is storing your kit. This is actually very important because when you first arrive um, at a dock and you're putting all your kit into um, someone's flat skiff, you want to make sure that you are putting it in the right place. Now, I normally make sure that I travel with not too much kit. Obviously, I need the things that are essential, but I don't take a whole bunch of stuff that I don't need. Space is at a premium, so you want to make sure that you are concise with your kit and then it will either go underneath the casting deck normally or it will go in the forecastle, a hatch over the top of the casting platform. Most modern skiffs these days, like dolphins or mavericks, also have rod racks that run along the length of the skiff. And these normally have pipes which go up underneath the casting platform for the rod tip. And then it means that the entire rod can be put in the gunnels safely and also will make sure that your reels don't get banged around because they're clipped in properly. As your skiff is not only your car to the flats, but also it's going to be your casting platform, it's really important not to clutter everything up because actually the last thing you need is bits of paraphernalia, stray wading boots and odd socks and fly boxes and all that stuff lying around in the well or the casting deck because all that's gonna do is either get in the way, which you will probably stand on, or more importantly, your line is gonna get caught up in this stuff. And if you hook into that permit of a lifetime and the line zips up and gets caught around an object which is lying around, you're going to be quite cross. So generally speaking, that's the first thing that I do when I get on a skiff is I want to admin my kit and make sure that it's all put away properly and that it's not going to be a nuisance during the course of my fishing day. The second most important point is weight allocation. Sit where the guide tells you to sit. The balance of a flat skiff can sometimes be a little volatile, so it's really important that the weight is allocated correctly across the platform, which will also help with the trim when you're running, and more importantly, when the guide is fishing with you on the back of a polling platform, it's gonna make his life easier to pull. Again, happy guide, and you're more likely to catch more fish. My third point, which just defies belief, and I never understand why people don't really get this, is be quiet. Being on a boat is a bit like being on your own personal megaphone. And what will happen is that the hull of the skiff translates noise directly down into all the fish and the fishing areas. And it's like a giant amplifier. So every bang and every crash and everything you drop, if you drop your pliers on the deck or something like that, those fish will hear that miles away. So you are only shooting yourself in the foot if you cannot be quiet on a boat. Not only that, it's very selfish for your boat partner, especially if they're up fishing and you're not. Well, of course, unless it's your best mate, in which case it's fine. My fourth tip is line management. Now this is a hard one because 
on a flat skiff, line can get wrapped on. If it has a chance to, it will wrap itself around everything it can find. So the first thing you want to do when you get on that casting platform is stretch your line so that it's not in pigtails coming off the reel. Make sure it's nice and limp and loose. And then what you want to do is you want to make a small roll cast and cast out a length of line, which is where you roughly want to be fishing. Strip that back in really carefully and place it into the well of the boat so that it is away from the wind because the wind will blow it straight over the side and invariably it'll probably end up wrapped around the guide pole or the prop, which is very irritating. Make sure that you have got the right length of line, strip it in a bit, and then bring some line round and another loop of line and hold the fly in your hand. So when you're standing in that ready position, pointing out at the front of the boat, you know that in a moment's notice, you can throw the fly out, it's not gonna get caught on anything, make a quick roll cast and then you can cast straight away and meet your target and the line because it has been carefully managed and put into the footwell won't catch up most of the time maybe less of the time my fifth point is to learn the clock face and distance as a standard rule of measure when you're standing on the front of a skiff 12 o'clock is the front of the bow then you have three o'clock, nine o'clock, and six o'clock directly behind you. The guide will use that clock face system to tell you where the fish are coming from. Now what I have found is that a lot of people who don't prepare and don't get used to this get flustered very quickly on the front of a skiff. So that GT or tarpon is cruising in, he's coming in at nine o'clock and he's coming in at two o'clock and they're going, which ways, which ways, which way, they lose it. So my recommendation for this is to actually practice this before you go on your trip or before you go out on your day's fishing. Get out there in the garden, make yourself a little clock face, and I know that people will think you're mental, but actually it will make a huge difference to have a little bit of muscle memory and be used to hearing those signals so that you know as soon as the guide says, fish is coming from 11 o'clock, you know which direction it's coming from. And that succinctly brings me on to measurement. Most guides around the world don't work in metric. They'll work in feet or yards, mostly feet, especially in the Caribbean area. So the first thing you wanna do is have that conversation with your guide, discuss which measurement you are used to and what they are used to. But I would advise you to also practice measuring distance in feet and yards, because that is the most common use when out on a flat skiff. Then the guide will be able to give you very specific directions as to where that fish is coming from and where it's going to be because it's really vital that you see the fish before you make that cast. Yes, your guide can put you on the fish, that's great, but if you see the fish, it makes an enormous amount of difference to how you're gonna present that fly. So my sixth tip, listen to the guide. I know I touched on this briefly earlier. At the end of the day, you are working in their environment. They do this all the time. They are very practiced and very used to it. So if they ask you to do something, there will be generally a reason behind that and normally a safety reason. Safety on a flat skiff is obviously key. You can unbalance a boat like that quite easily. So if they are asking you to do something, please do it. The other thing you need to take into consideration for your guide is that they are standing up on a polling platform up there. And if you have never done that, you should try once just to stand up there and actually see how hard it is to stay on the polling platform. It's a pretty hard thing to do straight off the bat. You think it's hard standing on the casting platform. It's much harder being further up like that. And the guide is always trying to maneuver the boat so that the wind will be over your best casting arm to improve your chances of getting the best shot. So communicate with them. Make sure that they know what you're thinking, but don't be a blabbermouth. My seventh tip is to make sure that you are wearing appropriate footwear. The last thing you wanna do is turn up on someone's pride and joy skiff with marking shoes, which is gonna leave black marks all over the boat. Your guide will not thank you because after a long day on the water, he's gonna have to scrub it clean before he can then take it out again the following day. 
So make sure that you are wearing some form of completely non-marking footwear. I mean, some people do wear their flats boots on boats. I, for one, get very, very hot feet on a skiff, so I like to go barefoot. And I go barefoot for a number of reasons. One, because it's cool, and two, because I find that I can feel the line under my feet. I know when I'm stepping on it. And also, if you've ever seen someone standing on a fly line with their boot and rubbing it this way, it puts an enormous twist in the line and they're completely unaware. So I generally go barefoot, but a word to the wise, <laughs> if you are gonna go barefoot in a flat skiff, remember to put really good factor sunblock on your feet. Trust me, there is nothing more painful than sunburnt tootsies. My eighth tip is to have a really suitable boat bag. Now, although we normally have flats packs and we have backpacks and stuff like that, a backpack will actually do a waterproof one. But if you are going on a day in a skiff, it's really useful to have a waterproof bag which will contain everything you need. Generally one which doesn't have loads of fixtures and fittings and buckles and everything which is going to get caught up. I personally quite like the roll top waterproof bags. They're my favourite because there's only basically two sets of straps on there and it's waterproof which is vital. Now even though your kit may be stored in the forecastle or underneath the casting deck, there's quite often some water sloshing around in the bilge. If you've got cameras in it or something like that, you don't want it getting wet. And also, you cannot account for the odd crashing wave coming over when you're running or something like that, which could then douse all your kit in salt water, which is about the last thing you need. It also keeps all your kit together in one place, so you don't end up with paraphernalia all over the boat. The last thing you want is that situation where you turn up with a boat partner and they just explode equipment all over the boat and you just go, Oh. Point number nine, this brings me quite quickly on to be a good boat partner. If you're fishing with someone, treat them with respect that they are due. They are there as well, they have paid the money that you have. So make sure that you are quiet and make sure that you don't babble incessantly and just talk for the sake of talking. By all means, have a conversation. But we all know what it's like when you're stuck in a skiff with someone that wants to tell you every single little part of their life story. And sometimes it's not appropriate, especially when you're on the front deck and you're looking and you're hunting and you are concentrating really hard. There's a time and a place for everything. Sometimes this is not it. If I'm partnering someone on a boat, I also want to try and help. And the, the best thing that you can do is to sit still most of the time, but also help them with their line management. If they are trying to cast line and pull it back into the footwell, help them out. Make sure that their line is in a nice position. It isn't all knotted. And if you see one, pull it out. Make sure that you are being a helpful boat partner because then next time they might want to fish with you again. Also, if you aren't the partner that's fishing, if you start moving around suddenly without telling anybody, it can unbalance the skiff and it can make it very difficult for the guide on the polling platform and your mate on the front. So try and be a helpful boat partner. And I think my last tip is make sure you have a spray jacket. A number of times I've been on a skiff and thought, ah, look, the sun is shining. There's barely a ripple on the sea. I'll be absolutely fine. I won't take my spray jacket, which I paid loads of money for. And then what tends to happen is within the first five minutes, a wave comes across the set and you get completely drenched. And then what happens is you've got to find that you are running for the next 30 minutes and running at speed in a skiff, which is going fast, even if it's warm, you can get quite chilly. So I would definitely advise you to have your spray jacket, take it on the skiff and use it. It's a really useful piece of kit. Well, as always, I hope you found that video useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.